Dusty Hill was the bass player and vocalist for ZZ Top from 1969 until his death in July of 2021. I've done videos on Billy Gibbons and Elwood Francis. I can't go any longer without adding him to the channel. He has been gone a year now, so let's take a quick look back on him and I'll give a few of my thoughts along the way as we take a little time and remember Dusty Hill. Joe Michael Hill, known to everyone as Dusty, was born in Dallas, Texas on May 19, 1949, and he grew up in Lakewood, East Dallas. He started singing at age eight and playing bass guitar a few years after that. Unlike many bass players, Dusty didn't really start out playing the six-string guitar. His brother Rocky did that, and when he needed a bass player and a singer for his band, he recruited Dusty for the job. Not much is ever said about Dusty's older brother, Rocky, who was born John Rockford Hill on December 1st, 1946. That's probably because Rocky pretty much kept a low profile and was in and out of music his whole life. He was said to have been a great guitarist who enjoyed the art of playing the blues. He said the reason him and Dusty split up was because Dusty wanted to head more into the rock music. I think there was a little more to it than that, but I've never heard or read Dusty himself say anything, so I'll just leave it at that. Rocky Dusty and Frank Beard played together in bands what seems to be three or so years before all three moving to Houston from Dallas when the band split up for good. As the years passed, there's been some of Rocky's music surface on YouTube. I'll put a few links in the description below the video. You can hear for yourself, he was really good. So I don't think talent or just wanting to play the blues was the real issues why Rocky's career didn't go further and Dusty and Frank moved on. Rocky died at age 62. A statement claimed he died of undisclosed complications of a medical condition. Okay, let's get back to Dusty's earlier life for a bit. Dusty didn't care much for school and wasn't very good at it. I hated school, Dusty said. My grades were always terrible. Part of the problem was that by the time I was 13, I was already playing in local bars. So school kind of got in the way of that, and I resented it. But I wasn't a total loss academically. I loved history, and that's something I've kept up an interest in. A lot of stories on how ZZ Top came to be, but from most accounts, Frank ended up jamming with Billy, who said he wanted to put a band together and get into more of the blues side of rock. Frank suggested Dusty as a bass player. So the three of them got together for a jam and kept playing together for over 50 years. Dusty playing with the same two guys the rest of his life, to me, this is just an amazing feat. Here's something about the band that shows the kind of guys Dusty and Billy were. When the band took some time off, Dusty said it was to give them time to grow beards, or Texas goatees as he called them, but in reality it was a little more serious than that. It was done because the band really needed a break, and Frank had become addicted to heroin and had to check himself into rehab. The rehab took a lot longer than expected, and after all this came out, Dusty and Billy were asked did they ever consider getting another drummer to replace Frank and without hesitation, they said no. During this time off is where Billy took off for Europe and Dusty decided to get a job at an airport for reasons only Dusty knows. It was right before the beards. We were pretty well known. We were big enough to where we were making really, really big money and people were starting to know who we were, but we weren't so big that I couldn't go anywhere if I dressed differently and acted differently. So I believe it helped me a great deal. It was my own rehab, but for different reasons. It kept me grounded. One topic that comes around a lot is Dusty's bass playing. I hear a few say, oh, he doesn't play anything complicated. He isn't anything special. Well, it is true. 
Dusty didn't play anything too complicated on the records or on stage. But it isn't because he couldn't have had he wanted to. He was a very smart bass player and knew exactly what to play to make his three-piece band move. The pocket work between him and Frank Beard was some of the best you'll ever hear. It might not have been complicated, but anyone who says he wasn't anything special isn't worth arguing with. Dusty cited cream bassist Jack Bruce and jazz bassist Stanley Clark as early influences. He said he used to play more complicated bass parts, but came to prioritize composition over complexity. Sometimes you don't even notice the bass. I hate that in a way, but I love that in a way. That's a compliment. That means you filled in everything and it's right for the song and you're not standing out where you don't need to be. His voice was great, although he didn't sing as much as Billy, but what songs and parts he did sing were always spot on. His tone was the same way. That big old round sound that Dusty described as sounding like a fart in a garbage can was there for a reason. His bass was always loud and full, but it never covered anything up. Billy's guitar could cut right through it and stand out, and Frank's kick was very defined pushing out. It was all done for a reason. Dusty always had a plan on how to keep the band moving and sounding good. Too bad he didn't have much of a plan in 1984 when his girlfriend pulled his boots off and his gun fell out and shot him. Or so the story goes. I've never heard Dusty himself say his girlfriend pulled his boot off. He might have pulled it off himself for all I know. But anyhow, the Derringer fell out and hit the floor and shot him in the stomach. Dusty says, my first reaction was, shit. And then, ouch. I couldn't believe I'd done something so stupid. To this day, I don't know how I could do it. But I didn't really feel anything at the time. All I knew was that I had to get myself to a hospital straight away. So I got in the car and drove there. It was only then when I arrived at the hospital that the seriousness of what I'd done hit me, and I went into shock. But I did recover. When asked if he believed there was a God, he said, Yes, I do. But I don't know what or who God actually is. If I did then I'd be out there spreading the word. The one thing Dusty said that always cracked me up was, when asked if he was a Democrat or a Republican, he answered, I just tell them that I'm a Texan, left to my own devices. I'd never leave Texas. Everything is bigger in Texas. I always wonder how a band survives, especially as long as ZZ Top had. With all the bullshit and a band has to go through with just to get started and make a few bucks and then it makes it in the recording business and then live through the grind of touring all over the place how did they do it for over 50 years dusty had a great answer for that too it's a cliche and sounds so simplistic but it's down to the three of us genuinely enjoying playing together we still love it and we still get a kick out of being on stage. We also have enough in common to maintain a bond between us, but the sufficient differences to keep our individuality. And after all this time, we all know what winds up the others and what makes them the people they are. Dusty kept a lower profile than Billy, but still got in his share of the spotlight. His on-screen appearances included Back to the Future Part 3, Mother Goose Rock and Rhyme, the July 29, 2009 episode of WWE Raw and Deadwood, and as himself in the 11th season episode of King of the Hill, Hank Gets Dusted, in which Hank Hill is said to be Dusty's cousin. He also made an appearance on the Drew Carey Show as himself, auditioning for a spot in Drew's band. Bub was rejected because of his attachment to his trademark beard, which he referred to as the Texas goatee. Dusty was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as a member of ZZ Top in 2004. 
Before Dusty left the band to go home and take care of his hip problems, Billy Gibbons says, Dusty emphatically grabbed my arm and said, give Elwood the bottom end and take it to the top. He meant it, amigo. He really did. Was Elwood prepared for this? Yeah, it sure seems that way. I guess we will never know for sure, and I'm okay with that. As a fan, it's really none of my business, because one thing I am pretty sure of is it was handled the way Dusty wanted it to be. Billy Frank and Dusty were together way too long to have been through way too much not to have the respect to honor exactly what Dusty wanted. And as I said, I'm okay with that. Dusty left us all a year ago, and this is not a knock on Elwood at all, as I think he might be the only one out there who could have moved into Dusty's spot and kept the band going as he did. And he is doing a great job, and the fans really love him. But losing Dusty took a part of ZZ Top with it. It really hits home that nothing lasts forever. But 52 years is as close as any band will ever get. For those of you who have never heard ZZ Top live, you miss seeing and hearing one of the smartest and down and dirty bottom end bass players ever. Dusty was a team player and did all that he could until his very last gig to keep his band sounding great and on top. Thank you all for watching. Please take the time to subscribe and ring the notification bell. The channel went over 10,000 subscribers this week, and I really want to thank you all for that. It got there in a very short time. What can I say? You all are the best. And long live ZZ Top and Billy Frank and Elwood keeping Dusty's wishes alive.